Today, I'm gonna to build a workbench that does something that no other workbench can. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first up, we're gonna start with the base, and I'm gonna use radiata pine plywood, three quarter inch thick, and this is my favorite plywood to cut on a CNC. It's gonna look awesome in my shop, and that's what I want. This project required three sheets of three quarter inch radiata pine plywood. And while the first one is cutting, let's jump in and I'll show you how I came up with this design. I got into SketchUp and modeled this workbench to have a torsion box under the worktop and curved legs that slot together and have these circular design elements that are purely for aesthetics. And the whole thing is meant to have a very industrial vibe. I also added some supports that connect the legs to the underside of the workbench to prevent sagging, and you'll see exactly how this turned out for me a bit later. I cut all those tabs and removed the parts from the first sheet before loading the second sheet onto the workbed of the machine. Round two, engage. Each round of carves only took about 45 minutes and when that second sheet was done, I could run the tool pass for that third and final sheet. I brought all of those parts over to the workbench to sand and cut off the remaining tabs before assembly. All the pieces are cut and now I can begin assembling the base of this workbench. The main structure of the base is essentially a torsion box. Now this whole thing goes together with this slot and tab construction. This is something that I've done before. I did it on the computer cart. I've got a link for that video as well. This time I'm gonna use just a little bit of glue on the uh, tabs when I slot them in. I wanna make sure this thing is nice and sturdy and stays together. I'll shoot in a couple of brad nails just to kind of hold everything together. Also with how tight these joints are, I really don't have to worry about clamping anything. It's gonna hold itself in nice and tight and allow for the glue to dry, which again is nice, because it would be kind of hard to clamp this. This slot and tab construction really makes that assembly process go super fast and easy. I didn't add any extra tolerance, so those tabs are super tight going into the slots, but that just serves to make this whole piece nice and sturdy. For the top and bottom of the legs, I added a board that spans between the two legs and connects them into one piece, which is a slight modification from my original design and is meant to prevent any side-to-side -side racking. The 45 degree support also slots into the spacer with a slot cut into the number two spacer with the other side connecting to a slot on the underside of the workbench. I also added a few brad nails to help hold everything together while that glue dries. Let's take a minute real quick and talk about the sponsor of this video, and that's M1 Finance. So what is M1 Finance? Well, M1 Finance is a super app that puts you in control of your wealth. It's a place where you can invest, borrow, save, and spend your money how you want with sophisticated automation tools to help you reach your financial goals more easily. M1 Finance is for serious investors who understand that a consistent long-term strategy is the best approach for building your wealth. A flexible portfolio line of credit at one of the lowest rates on the market and borrow against your investments without extra paperwork. All of those investment opportunities at no commission investing and low cost borrowing. You'll get the best of digital banking all seamlessly integrated with your investments, which empowers you to make every cent work hard for you. Hundreds of thousands of investors are already automating their finances with M1 and for a limited time my viewers will receive an extra $30 when they sign up for an M1 account and invest a thousand. Just use my link down below or go to m1finance.com slash money. And a big thanks to M1 Finance for supporting my channel and make sure you go check them out. 
The main construction of the workbench is complete and now I can add the casters before flipping the whole thing over. I'm adding five inch double locking casters and I'll make sure to link the set that I use down below as well as all the other tools and materials you'll need to build this workbench. All right, so I'm guessing some of you eagle-eyed viewers noticed it right away, but there is a significant amount of sag to the middle of this table. I thought that the torsion box design and these extra supports were gonna be enough, clearly, I was wrong. Potentially what I should have done is added a center spine along the inside of the torsion box, but I wanted to make drawers that can slide all the way through out each side, so that's why I left that open. So I jumped back into SketchUp and I designed this center leg support. Now this wasn't a part of my original design, but I think it fits the overall aesthetic well and still looks really cool, which besides this being a functional workbench, looking awesome is my number two goal on this project. <laughs> oh, my knees, I'm too old to squat like that. Oh. Back over to the CNC to cut out the center support and I made this one so it's a single leg that fits under the workbench and gives me room to stand at the workbench without running into it. I attached the center support, which took out all that sag from the workbench and fixed that issue that I had. Okay, welcome to the star of the show, and that's this, UHMW, which stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene, sometimes called UHMWPE. It's extremely similar to something you might have heard of called HDPE. The difference being, this is much harder, a lot more durable, and that's the reason why I chose this for my workbench top. Now, I got the idea from Jess Crow over at Crow Creek Designs on Instagram. She does a lot of epoxy work. You might know her from the Maker Epoxy that she does with Total Boat, and she uses a UHMW workbench that you can pour epoxy on and it does not ever stick to the workbench. I can do epoxy pours right on top of it without having to create a mold. That means I'm gonna be saving money buying sheets of melamine and all those consumables that just end up in a landfill where I can just use this over and over and over. I'm gonna cut grooves into this that's gonna allow me to create different size molds for different types of epoxy projects. Real quick, just for fun, let's do a little experiment. I'll pour some epoxy on top of a piece of UHMW and you can see exactly how awesome this stuff is. And then I'll tell you how much it costs because it's a lot. Real quick, I'm gonna mix up a small batch of this Total Boat High Performance Epoxy and then throw some black pigment in there so you can actually see it against the white. Now, like I said, this stuff is extremely expensive. That four by 10 sheet of UHMW cost $615 with tax out the door. Why would I spend that much for material for a workbench? Or why would you spend that much for uh, material for a workbench top? Well, the reason would be is if you were doing a lot of epoxy projects. You know, a sheet of melamine costs anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks. You know, you have to buy that over and over and over, and you might be able to get a couple uses out of a uh, mold, but that stuff just ends up in a landfill. I hate that. I hate that I'm being so wasteful just trying to make Make, you know, like a small epoxy pour. The function of this workbench isn't just for epoxy pours. Like it's a functional workbench for any sort of task that you want to do. This stuff is extremely dense. It's extremely hard. I know I'm talking a lot. I'm going to get those comments. Oh, he talks too much. That's what I do. I'm, I'm a talker. Ask my wife. Okay. Throw a little black pigment in there. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a day and we'll come back and we'll peel that right off and you can see how amazing this material is.
Well, that epoxy was curing, I threw the UHMW sheet onto the CNC, and I had to secure this by driving screws from the underside of the workbed. Now I can cut all those dados that accept the slats that are gonna make up the sides of any molds that I create on top of this workbench. Okay, the epoxy has had about eight hours to cure, and while it's not completely hardened, um, it's hard enough for our purposes, and I can show you just how easily and satisfying this is gonna peel off. Check it out. Oh, uh, look at that. <laughs> How awesome was that? This is gonna be a game changer in my shop. Having a surface that I can pour directly on top of without having to use any melamine, it makes the price of this material absolutely worth it in my book. The UHMW is all cut to size and now I can attach it to the workbench by driving screws through the torsion box using this right angle drill attachment. And here last I'm making four drawers that fit into the torsion box openings and have the ability to pull out from both sides and don't require any drawer slides. Vetrick Aspire has a box making gadget baked into the software and I use that to create these perfectly sized finger jointed drawer boxes which fit so tightly together that I don't even need to use glue to assemble them. And with that, this workbench is finished. Well, minus adding finish, which I'll do later once I decide which finish I wanna use or maybe I'll paint it, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. And here you can see how those drawer boxes pull out from either side and don't require any drawer slide hardware. For the workbench top, I was gonna cut the form sides out of more UHMW, but I changed my mind and decided to use scrap plywood instead. As expensive as the UHMW was, I wanna save those leftover pieces for more projects, and using plywood will allow me to cut more custom sized pieces as I need them for the different size molds that I'll need to create on top of this workbench. And then when I'm done with those plywood pieces, I can store them underneath the workbench along that lower part of the legs like this. All right, make sure you get subscribed to see what I'm building next. And let me know what you think of this workbench down in the comments below. Would you spend $600 on a workbench top if it saved you that money in the long run? Heck, I would. Okay, thanks for checking this one out. And I'll see you back here next time.